turn to page number 338. First and last, at Calvary, as we stand. Calvary. Brother Barry Bishop, step up here if you will, brother, and pray for us. We're glad you're here. Welcome each and every one of you. And if you're visiting with us today, we want you to know that you are the honored guest here at Mountain View Baptist Church. We, we are always delighted, always delighted to have visitors in our congregation. And we're going to shake your hand in a little bit, or if you want us to or not, but we're just glad you're here. Thank you for coming to church. Brother Barry Bishop, open us in prayer, please. Sir. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you again for the place to assemble, dear Lord, that we can come together and worship with our fellow brothers and sisters, dear God. I pray for every request, dear Lord, in the prayer room, dear Lord, earlier in the week, dear God. I pray, dear Lord, for our pastor, you touch and move upon him. I know he studied this week, anoint and use him. Every request there in the Sunday school, Brother Randy mentioned, dear Lord, several people sick, dear Lord. And those that are here, dear Lord, not feeling well, I pray you touch them. What I thought earlier, dear Lord, as I was talking with some friends in the church, some church is still going virtual, dear Lord, not even able to meet, dear God, still has, the, dear Lord, not many of them, dear Lord. We pray, dear Lord, and thank you for what you're doing around here. Keep us safe. I pray for lost sinners to be saved, lives to be changed. Thank God for a church that Jesus purchased with his precious blood. I pray you drive back every opposing force, principal of fire. Spiritual wicked of high places. Bless, dear Lord, everything said and done here. Yeah. Redound down to the glory of God. Bless Brother Kyle as he leads the special yeah. singing. Yeah. Yeah. And dear Lord, when the preaching's preached, dear Lord, may it go forth and ears to be heard. Yeah. heard dear Lord, hearts to be receptive. And dear Lord, people to get closer to you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you. you. may be seated all over the building again. Let me say I appreciate all of you coming. And may the Lord minister to your heart and bless your heart. Appreciate the uh, Cud family. They had a big wedding yesterday and all of them's right back here in church today we congratulate uh john and diane and the family Jana and uh and dustin were married yesterday and the lord blessed and held off the rain to be able to have the outdoor wedding so we thank god for that all right now tonight we'll be right back at 6 p.m we'd love to have you in the 6 p.m service and then we'd love to have you at wednesday night at 7 30 if you can get free we'd be honored to have you in that uh, Wednesday night 7:30 service, here recently we we uh, were made aware of a website that uh, that everybody needs to check, and it's from the state of South Carolina, and uh, it's un unclaimed. Un believe it or not, it's not unclaimed furniture, but it's unclaimed money. And and I thought, how in the world? Well, it's it, it, it's valid, it's truthful, and it's from the state of South Carolina, and and the church. The church had $178 we didn't even know about. I don't know how all that happened, but here it is. So we're putting that in. Let's have the ushers come on in and uh, come on down anyway. We'll put all the money in. You give your regular tithes and your regular offering, and you visitors, if you will, please put the visitor's card in the offering plate so we can get better acquainted with you, all right? Brother and Sister Bennett, God bless you. So good to see you. I just saw you over to my left. God bless you. Thrilled that you're here today. May the Lord bless you. Brother Dale Gibson, glad you're here. Let's worship God in our giving. The choir is going to sing, all right? Choir number 46. Glad to be an old time Christian. As we stand.
song. We appreciate it so very, very much. Uh, yesterday at the wedding, they had these little uh, beautiful little plants, and I know they'll grow, but uh, I think John told me they had 30 or 35 or 40 left over. They're in the front for you, Brother John, front for you. All right, and they're free, right? They're free? Yes, sir, they're free. It costs you something, but they're free to everybody else, all right? So uh, get you one of these little cute little things, and uh, thank you for your kindness to bring them this way. Let's pray together. Brother Trey, if you'll step up here, ask the blessing on the offering and the rest of the service. Brother Trey Humphreys, please. Lord, thank you again for the privilege to be here this morning. Thank you for the privilege to be healthy and well and able to come. And yes. Lord, our hearts ache for those that can't. And we ask you, God, would you touch and minister to them. And Lord, bless them and encourage them. Lord, right there where they are this morning, I praise you for the prayers you've answered. I thank you for the big things you've done this week. Thank you for getting the seniors back home safe and giving them a good trip. Thank you for Miss Barbara doing good and, Lord, everything being all right. And I sure thank you for those that are here that, Lord, that, that hadn't been able to be here in a while. We just appreciate everything you've done. God, you're a faithful God and a faithful friend. And I thank you for, Lord, being so good to us. I ask you, God, if you would, would you smile on this hour this morning? Would you, Lord, use the preaching here in a few minutes? Would you bless these that will sing here in a little bit? God, I pray that the Spirit of God would have his way in all of our hearts this morning. And I beg you, God, would you help us to leave closer than when we come in. And, and I pray that this, every sinner in the building this morning, whoever they are, I pray that the Spirit of God would tug on their heart like never before this morning. I, I pray that the Holy Spirit of God, Lord, would pull on their heartstrings this morning. And that they'd be miserable in their sin. And I pray this morning, God, that you'd work in their hearts. We love you. God, thank you for being kind and faithful. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for everything you've done. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, choir's going to sing again. I want to welcome Mr. Philip Gwynn. I want to welcome Miss Lisa Williams. God bless you. I thank you from Pacalip, but we're delighted you're here. We appreciate you coming here, and especially appreciate you filling out this visitor's card. All right? Choir, sing for us, okay? Number six. In the name of Jesus. the very thought of Jesus, those earthly treasures, they grow strangely dim, and all my longing, and all my searching, I found them all when I met him. My burden slider, oh, the day is so much brighter when that lovely old name I hear. Let's everybody take a hymn and let's turn to page 473. First and last, victory in Jesus as the choir comes down the last verse.
Singers are getting ready, getting in place. I want to welcome Jesse and I think, is it, is it Caitlin? Got it. All right. I, I've met you before, haven't I? Yes. I come see you in the hospital, didn't I? Yeah. I thought so. We're glad you're here. Glad you're here. May God bless you. All right. Let's worship with our special singers and let the Lord minister to your heart. All right. We're missing out on the good life, according to men of degree. We're missing out on life's normal pleasures by standards of worldly belief. They say we're too narrow, we should learn to just let go. We're all missing out somehow, but when I think of their claims and the pleasures they name, I'll admit, I have missed out, I missed out, out on, on the, the heartache, heartache of, of living my life, life in sin, I missed out, out on the sorrow of facing a world without Him, him. and I Ooh. have no regrets for the things that I've missed, cause I down deep that Christians are missing out socially. They say that our stand and this book in our hand 
is not right politically. They call our convictions religious addictions. They claim that we're all turned around. Well, we can't deny one thing they got right. Yes, it's true. We have been sad. I've been sad on the heartache of living my life in sin. I've been sad on the sorrow of facing a world without Him. And I have no regrets for the things that I've missed, cause down The things that I miss, cause down deep in my heart, the truth was and is every day. Every day that, that I live, I, I thank God for what I miss. What I miss. Amen to that. I'll tell you, that list can go on and on and on. It really could for a long time. All right, y'all ready? One more song. I'd give anything if y'all had been in Sunday school class this morning and heard Brother Randy describe how much the Lord loved us and what Jesus did for us. Y'all don't realize how hard it is right now in America. You're free to worship this morning. You, it's free. You need to be thankful for that and not take, and not take, take that for granted. Because one day it could be taken away. I'm not against vaccinations. Don't get me wrong. Don't go out of here saying, oh, Cam's anti-whatever. I'm not. I don't care. You do what you want to. But you're going to live in a world one day where they're going to make you do stuff that you don't necessarily want to do. And worship is one of them. They're going to say, hey, you can't do that anymore. I'm free to worship this morning. I thank God I missed out on a lot of stuff. And I appreciate that song this morning. I do. I'm free to worship. Y'all are too. Y'all take advantage of it this morning. in my life and you don't know the many times that God has touched my mind all the things that used to bind me now are laying at his feet so if you don't want to praise him then please don't bother me I'm free to worship free to lift up my hands and praise the Lord after all he's done The chains that had me bound will never hold me anymore. I'm free to worship, free to worship the Lord. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Praise the Lord, after all he's done. 
worship the Lord. All the chains that had me bound will never hold me anymore. I'm free to worship, free to worship the Lord. song great song you say amen to that praise the lord for it we'll have other people in church tonight we also are going to announce tonight uh we just found out ourselves some of you know most of you do not know but uh somebody else is expecting a little one and so we're going to wait and announce that tonight all right luke chapter 15 please everybody luke 15 you know it well give me all you can if you will up there in the sound booth and i appreciate that I really ask God to help me today to preach. I want you to ask God as well to help me to preach today. I have a thought that I want to get to, and it's going to take me just a little bit of introduction to get to it. But uh, uh, this this chapter here is a is a great great chapter. I mean, it is a great chapter, and uh, you know and I know that there is a lot of evangelistic truth that is presented in Luke chapter 15. As a matter of fact, you have the parable of the lost sheep you have the parable of the lost coin or the silver brother Andy and then you have the parable of the uh, the movement of the lost son and the lost sheep the lost silver and the lost son were all found somebody help me and thank God it pictures for you and I and brother Barry it pictures how God can save lost sinners redeem recover them and bring them out of being lost. And so we know that Luke 15 is all about that. We're not going to go that route this morning, maybe somewhat, but primarily it's going to be to home and family and all of us, all right? Home and family and all of us. Look at chapter 15, verse 11. And he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in war. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would feign, the word feign means desire, He would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, by the way, it wasn't long that after he came to himself that we find him coming to the Father. I wish somebody would come to themselves. When he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And that's what God did for you and I. Father loved him so much he ran. He ran to meet him while he was coming home. Uh, this story, I tell you, literally, this story will make you put your Bible down, your purse down, and run to the red rooster, shouting all the way. Maybe we ought to say run to Spencer Insulation. That's a little bit closer for us older people, all right? But anyway, what a great truth. Verse 21, and the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven. And in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf and kill it. Let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Our Lord. Thank God for the sirloin. Thank God for the symphony. 
Thank God for the song. The, all that happened upon the reconciliation of the Son with the Father. Wonderful, wonderful, Brother Paul Wallace, evangelistic truths are found in Luke chapter 15. And we could stay there all day, but I want to gear it down here, Brother David, where we live and what's happening in our world, what's happening in America, what's happening in, in homes and families. And so I want to preach just for a little while about thank God the prodigal came home. Thank God the prodigal came home. I got to hurry because I have a main thought that I wanted to get to. First of all, I want you to think with me about what he left. And I'm not going to reread all this, but what did he leave? Brother Kyle, he left the father's house. He left the fellowship of the family. And he left the fullness of supply. Could I tell you today that he left communion with the father. He left companionship with the family. And he left the comforts of daddy's house. Amen. And so he left a whole lot, dear friend. I mean, he left a lot. And again, we can apply this to a lost sinner. How they leave the father's house or leave the fellowship of the family or the fullness of supply. But I can't stay long, Brother Mike Thread, on what he left. But I want to hasten and say a word about where he landed. Where he landed. My Lord, somebody needs to listen. Where did he land? Brother Ivester, he landed in a place where there was a famine. He landed in where he became friendless. He had no friends left. And probably Miss Dovey, here's the saddest part. He landed in the far country. And what is the far country? The far country is a world of sin without God. That's what it is. It is a world of sin without God. You better be careful when you leave, friend. I said you better be careful when you leave because you very well might wind up or land in the far country. You say it can't happen to me. Don't say that. It's happened to a whole lot of others. Say that will never happen to me. Please don't say that. It's happened to many, many before you and it will happen to many, many after you. Where did he land? He landed in a place of famine. He landed in a place of being friendless. Brother Derek, he landed in the far country. But watch it. He landed, Brother Alex, in the fields of swine, in the herds of swine. And according to Leviticus chapter 11, verse 7 and 8, if he was Jewish, then the swine was an unclean animal. It was an abominable animal unto him. How far does sin take you? How far does sin take us? Could I tell you this? That sin will take you farther than you ever wanted to go. It will cost you more than you ever wanted to pay. And my God in heaven, it'll keep you longer than you ever planned to stay. It's sad, sad, sad what he left. But it's also sad, Brother Kyle, where he landed, a place of famine, a place of friendlessness, a place of the far country and the fields of swine. But where did he land, Brother Stokes? Where his freedom was gone. His freedom was gone. Brother Randy, he had freedom back home, but now he's a slave to a foreigner. I tell you today, the son of the father, the son of the father is now become the slave of the foreigner. You say, where is that in the Bible? Look, if you will, in verse number uh, verse numbers 15, and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. You see, he was looking for freedom but he found bondage. He was looking for liberty, but he found shackles. He was looking for fullness, but he found the fields of swine, an abominable way to live, a detestable way to live. I say again today, be careful what you leave. Oh, be careful of what you leave. You say, why should I be careful of what I leave? Because of where you might land. 
of where you might end up. I am convinced, Brother Stoltz, that when the prodigal son got all of his inheritance and all of his clothes and all of his belongings, Mr. Menez, I just about promise you, he never intended, he never intended uh, to land in the far country, uh, friendless, and living his life, a riotous life, and wasting his substance uh, with riotous living. I say to every adult in the sanctuary today, I say to every college and career, I say to every teenage person in the building today, oh, please be careful about leaving the Father's house. Please be careful about leaving the fellowship of the family. I said the fellowship of the family. And please be careful about leaving the fullness of supply because you never do know and you never can tell where you're going to land. I could preach a long time, Brother Galloway, about what he left. I could preach a lot longer about where he landed, but I want to say a word about what he lost. I want to say I do have an outline. You're getting it, all right? Brother Joe, what did he lose? What did he lose? Well, according to this book right here, Brother David, he lost the inheritance that his daddy gave him. Look, if you will, in verse number 12, and the younger of them said unto his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that followed to me. Look at the verse. And he divided unto them his living. That sounds like his inheritance. But look at the next verse. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And here's a sad commentary. And there wasted. I wonder how much substance it was. Miss Pat, how much, how much inheritance was it? How long could it have lasted? Uh, could it have carried him through, Brother Randy? Uh, for years and years, we do not know. But I tell you this, uh, not only of what he left, uh, not only where he landed, but think with me today about what he lost. What did he lose? He, lo he lost his inheritance. He squandered it. He wasted it. He just spent it all out. And by the way, what did he spend it on? He spent it on a haphazard lifestyle. He spent it on the harlot. Somebody help me right there. That's over in verse number 30, I believe it was. Yet this thy son had devoured thy living with harlots. Verse number 30, he wanted all that uh, extramarital, um, excuse me, that premarital, that promiscuous lifestyle. Could I tell everybody in the building today that that promiscuous lifestyle, that, that fleshly lifestyle, that sensual lifestyle, it doesn't pay good dividends. Uh, you will squander and you will waste and you will throw away everything that God Almighty, everything that mom and daddy gave you. I say without apology today, uh, the promiscuous lifestyle is not the life nobody needs to live. Ma'am, he lost his inheritance. I'm trying to hurry. I believe, Brother David, he lost his innocence. He lost his innocence. You say, what is innocence? That is when you are free from guilt and you're free from condemnation and you are free from the burden and the conviction and the condemnation of sin that hangs over you that at one time in your life you were unacquainted with. I said you were unacquainted with. Brother Wofford, nobody will ever convince me that he started out to squander the father's inheritance on harlots, but that's what he ended up doing. I say again to you, I sin will take you farther than you ever wanted to go. It will cost you more than you ever wanted to pay. And it'll keep you longer than you ever wanted to stay. Oh, friend, he lost his inheritance, Brother Ivester, and he lost his innocence. He lost his innocence. I could stay all day on what he left. I could stay all day on where he landed. I could preach a lot longer on what he lost. And I want to say this conclusively for this first part of the message. I want to say how he was loved. Yeah. How he was loved. He said, I don't believe that. Take your Bible, everybody. Take your Bible. 
and go to Deuteronomy chapter 21. I have to show you this. A lot of people don't know this is in the Bible. I want you to go to Deuteronomy 21. Please do the preacher a favor and go to Deuteronomy 21 this morning. Everybody, I need to show you this. It will bless your heart. It will help you a little bit. Deuteronomy 21, please, quickly. That's page uh, 239 in the old Schofield Bible. Deuteronomy 21, verse number 18. Look at verse 18. If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son. Now, that's the prodigal of Luke 15. Brother Brian, that's the prodigal that I'm reading about in the New Testament, which will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, and that when they have chastened him, will not hearken to them. That's a pretty sad commentary right there, that when a young person gets chastened, that they still will not hearken. That's a terrible way to live. Then verse 19, Then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him, and bring him out into the elders of the city, and under the gate of his place. And they shall say unto the elders of the city, This our son is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. And all the men of his city shall stone him with stones, that he die. So will thou shalt thou put away evil from among ye, and all Israel shall hear and fear. Everybody's looking this way in the Old Testament and Deuteronomy chapter number 21, Brother Stoll. Does anybody realize, Brother Matt, what they did with the prodigal, what they did with a rebellious son, a rebellious daughter? They brought them to the gate of the city, Brother Pittman, and they stoned them with stones because God said, I want to purge the land. I want to clean the land. I don't want the land to foul. Why are y'all getting quiet? I don't want the land to foul. And so in Luke chapter 15, Brother Blackwell, under the law, he was condemned. Under the law, he was guilty. Under the law, execution should have taken place. I said execution should have taken place. And they should have stoned him with stones. But Lord, that's not what happened. Thank God that's not what happened. But the father saw him a great way off. And the Bible said that the father ran and the son was coming up the road. I say to you, yes, uh, we could preach about uh, what he left. And uh, we could preach about where he landed. And we could preach about what he lost. But thank God, thank God. Let's highlight, let's shout about, let's rejoice. Because thank God he was loved. Now I want to tell you something today. If you're a prodigal, I said if you're a prodigal, or if you're thinking about being a prodigal, or you're contemplating being a prodigal, I want you to know God loves you. Amen. God loves you. Will you agree with me today that this prodigal under the law was condemned? And I know it's harsh, and I know it's bitter pill to swallow, and I know you might be shaking your head, at least on the inside. How in the world, Brother Nathan, could they do that? The mom and dad brought the son to the gate of the city and said he's a drunkard, he's a glutton, he's rebellious. And the Bible said, Miss Kirker, they'd pick up rocks. I'm not talking about styrofoam. I'm talking about rocks. And they stoned that boy to death under the law. By the way, I'm glad we're not under the law. Hallelujah goes right there. I said, I'm glad we're not under the law. I am thank God for grace. Amen. I say again to you, I say again to you, be careful what you leave. I say again to you, you'll never know where you're going to land. And I say again to you, be careful because of what you're going to lose. But always, always, always remember Always remember that there's a love that will not let you go. Oh, God, I need to preach this. There's a love that's everlasting. There's a love that's like no love you've ever experienced. There's a love that's beyond human comprehension. I need some help up here. There's a love 
beyond my imagination. There's a love that goes beyond my sin. There's a love that goes beyond our rebellion. There's a love that goes beyond our foolishness. There's a love, thank God, that will not let us go. There's a love that will leave the 90 and 9 in the fold and go out and find the one that was lost. You may be a prodigal or you may think about being a prodigal or you've meditated or contemplated or you've got friends or you've got family. We've got friends or family that are prodigals. I want to serve notice today and declare today that they might be prodigal, but thank God, God still loves them. Amen. God still cares. God still loves them. Under the law, you'd be stoned. Under the law, you'd perish. But under grace, under grace, don't forget my picture right here. Under grace, you've got a daddy that's sitting on that porch. Maybe this is going to be the day. My wandering boy comes home. Brother David, I'm not kidding. One of these days, I've thought about it a hundred times. I don't know why, but you always come to my mind. I'm going to get you to you get some, some tattered garments about down into here, an old tattered shirt, and I'm going to be doing this, and I want you to come in that back door singing, I've wandered far away from God. Now I'm coming home. I've wandered far away from God. Probably should have done it this morning. I hope I didn't miss God. Oh, friend, I want to tell you, you may be out there, and you may be thinking about going out there, and maybe you are out there now. I want you to know that the Heavenly Father is looking out over the battlements of heaven and saying, oh, wanderer, come home. Oh, wanderer, come home. But today is the day. But today get right. Today get back in fellowship. Today get back in the Father's house. Get back in the Father's house. I said get back in the Father's house. Uh, restore your relationship. Restore your fellowship. Restore your Christian life. God still loves you. Amen. Lest we pick up stones, lest we pick up stones and start throwing them ourselves, I think we'd be well served in thinking about all the times that he left the 99 in the wilderness and came got us in the midst of our shenanigans, in the midst of our disobedience, in the midst of our coldness. Thank God for that love that will not let us go. Hallelujah. Well, that, ladies and gentlemen, is basically the condensed version story of the prodigal. And I like the outline myself. Brother Love, what he left, where he landed, what he lost, but how he was loved. That'll preach in a white church, a black church, a Hispanic church. That'll preach on the street corner. That'll preach right here. That'll preach at midnight. That'll preach at 6 a.m. Thank God for truth. Amen. Thank God for truth. Here's what I wanted to get to. There are four home situations in this chapter. Miss Paula, four home situations. I'm going to give them to you and go. Number one, he's at home, but he's not happy. Let's get right down to where we live now. He's at home, but he's not happy. Watch this. The next movement, he's away from home, but he's still not happy. He's still not happy. Because when he got down there, it was hogs and tattered garments. And I didn't get on this right here, Brother Clifford, but it was nothing to eat. The Bible said he would feign. Look up that word. The word feign means he desired. Brother Love, it doesn't mean he, he, it doesn't mean he even got the feed off the husk. Who the devil wants to eat corn husk that you've been feeding the hog? Hey, friend, he's at the bottom of the barrel. He not only was friendless, but he was starving. So here, Brother Jacob, He's at home and he's not happy. He leaves home looking for God only knows what. And guess what? He's still not happy. He's still not happy. And then there's a third movement, Brother Derek. 
He's homesick. He's homesick. He said, he can't prove it. Oh, yes, I can. Look at verse 17, everybody. Look at verse 17. And when he came to himself, hey, you need to come to yourself. Somebody said, I need to have a come to Jesus meeting. Well, that's pretty good too. But I tell you, I tell you what else will help you. Come to yourself. Come to yourself. Put your right thinking on. Somebody help me right up here. Came to himself, how many hired servants of my father's have bread enough in despair, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. In the first movement, in the first movement, Brother Landon, he's at home, but he's not happy. In the second movement, he's away from home, but he still isn't happy. But then in the third movement, Brother Johnny, he begins to get homesick. I tell you, he begins to get homesick. Brother Cud, Brother Andy Jr. got to thinking about, got to thinking about the Father's house. I can't help but think he said, my God, my bedroom. Oh, God. Oh, Lord, I had a bedroom. I had a bed. Thank God I had some covers. I had some, I had some, I had some, I had some fresh water. I had some fresh water. Lord God, we had heat in the, Heat in the winter and AC in the in the winter. You know, I'm just saying, Lord God, Mama could cook. Lord God, Mama could cook. Lord God, I miss them cat head biscuits. Lord God, I miss that country style steak with gravy. Lord God, I miss them homegrown, homespun, homemade mashed potatoes where you got to peel all the taters. Somebody help me. Lord, I miss that southern sweet, sweet iced tea. Somebody said, do you go to a restaurant and order non-sweet? Never, but never, never, never. It don't matter to me. Die happy. Say amen. Die happy. You want water? No, I don't want water. I want sweet tea. Sweet tea with sugar in it. I live in the South. Amen. He started missing that iced tea. Started missing that patio and that porch where that cool breeze would blow. And then Brother Trey said, my Lord. He said, my daddy's servants, my daddy's servants have more bread than I have. My daddy's servants, look at your Bible, have bread enough and to spare. They've got this, the servants, the slave, the menial tat, the workers of the menial tat. Uh, Miss, Miss Mullinack, they have more to eat than I do. So here's my point, Miss Atkins. Here's my point. He's at home and he's not happy because he wanted to leave. He left and he's away from home, but he's still not happy. And now he's homesick. He's homesick. What got him homesick? Because he came to himself. He came to himself. And he realized he made a mistake. He realized he shouldn't have been down there. He realized that his search for happiness, he didn't find happiness. Brother Kevin, his search for liberty, God help me, okay. Jesse, his search for liberty only found bondage. His search for, watch this, God's given it to me while I pray. Brother Cam, his search for plenty only brought poverty. Friendless, starving, cold, slopping hogs. If you're a pig farmer, we ain't got nothing against you. Jewish boy should not have been doing it. By the way, I could preach right there. Listen to this, listen to this. Doing them hogs, he was doing something that he's brought up all of his life not to do. Everybody look up here. Don't, don't get distracted. Put your phones down. Put your phones down. Put your notepads down. Don't get no bubble gum right now. Don't get no bubble gum right now. Don't get no lifesaver right now. Everybody look up here. He was down there doing something that he'd been taught all of his life not to do. Right about it? All of his life not to do. So I say, Brother Josiah, he was at home and he wasn't happy. He went away from home and he wasn't happy. And now he's homesick. But I tell you, I'd be a terrible preacher, Brother Blackwell, if I ended it right there. I'd be a terrible preacher. Oh, yes, he was at home but not happy. 
He was away from home but not happy. He was homesick and he knew where happiness was. I said he was homesick and he knew where happiness was. But thank God he said, I will arise and go to my father. And I will say to my father, I've said, hey, friend, you know what the final movement is? Thank God he's back home. Thank God. Y'all need to be more vocal than that. I said, thank God he's back home. Now I want to tell you something, friend. You can go back home too. You can come back home. Amen. You can come back home. Or you can go back home. Where home is, I'm not sure about some of you, but I know where it was for this prodigal. It's right there where his daddy and mama loved him and cared about him. Now, here's the question I have, and I want to close. I want everybody to think about this, because, I mean, I have so many more notes right now. But I want to ask you a question. This is what, this is what has been, Brother Carter, Miss Carter, this is what's weighed on me greatly for the past two or three days. And don't answer me out loud at first, okay? I want to ask you a question. When did he leave home? Think with me, all right? Think. Mr. Menez, when did he leave home? Scripturally and biblically and verse-wise, He left home in verse number 13. Look at it. Look at verse 13. And not many days after. Now, there's a strong phrase right there. In other words, as soon as the father divided the inheritance. Please don't. This is the most important part of the message, everybody. I really want you to put your phones down now. I mean, if, if you are, put it down. Okay, turn it on silent. And not many days after, the younger son, Brother Yank, gathered all together. That's all of his stuff and all the inheritance. And took his journey to a far country. So biblically, biblically, Brother David say, that verse right there is when he left home. Now look, watch this. Watch this. That's when he physically, geographically, personally, bodily, bodily, this is when he left home. But I don't think that's when he left home. Brother Ken, I don't think that's when he left home. So what is your point? The same point that's worrying me to death about this young generation. It's worrying me to death about this youth choir. It's worrying me to death about the students of Mountain View Christian Academy, I am afraid, I am desperately afraid that some have already left home. Somebody, anybody got a wallet? Give me a wallet. Somebody give me a wallet. Wallet, I don't have mine. Wallet, I'm not going to do nothing to it. Wallet. Hope you got a little bit of money in here. You probably don't. No, I need some money. I need some money. I need I need that money. I need that money. I need that money. Here's your inheritance. Here's your portion. Count it out. Your brother's over here. He's got his portion. Make sure we're fair. Make sure we're doing this accurate. Make sure we're not depriving you of anything. You said, Father, where's, where's, the, where's that which coming to me? Make sure you get it all. Got it? No sooner than he got his inheritance. Not many days after. One, two, three. How many do you think? I'd say no more than a couple. No more than a couple. He packs his stuff, packs his stuff, packs his stuff, and he goes. Now watch me. You keep going. (laughs) You're out of here. You can come back. You can come back. That didn't happen in two days. 
That don't happen in two. Come on back, Landon. That don't happen in two days. Come on back. Take a seat. Take a seat. You think maybe we better start having some talks? Do you think some people in this building need to go home today, sit their college and career, sit their teenager down, sit their adolescent and say, what's going on in your mind? What's going on in your heart? Are you happy with this Christian life? Are you happy with old-time church? Are you happy with old-time religion? You still love Preacher Griffith? You still love the church? You still want to be active? You still want to be involved? You see, here's what's happening. After he left, it was too late. It was too late. Hey, hey, it was too late when he got down there in the hog pen. It was too late when he down there friendly and he done wasted all his inheritance. Here's my point. We better get him. We better get a hold of him or God better get a hold of him before they leave. Say amen. I think what we're facing, I think what we're facing is that some people have already left before they leave. They've already left before they leave. And then when the opportunity arises, when the opportunity arises, they leave. You know why they leave? Because they've already left. Am I making sense? They've already left. Say, not happening. <laughs> don't, don't make me get my phone out and show you some stuff. Oh, yes, it is happening. Yes, it is happening. You say, well, what do you want? Oh, there, 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 there's kids. There's young, young people that are not physically gone. They're not physically gone. But guess what? They're already gone. They're already gone. They're already gone. I would suggest, as the pianist comes, I would suggest two things. First of all, if you're here and you are a prodigal and you've got out and you've got away and you've drifted and now you never thought that would ever happen to you, I would suggest you ought to break out of your pew. Amen right there. You ought to break out of your pew. You ought to come down here and let us love you and pray with you. Can I tell you this? God still loves you. God still loves you. And then I would suggest, I would suggest, if you are physically, 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 if you've left, physically, I'd say secondly, you ought to highly contemplate going back home. And then here's my main point. If you're contemplating leaving and in your heart you've already left, you ought to get in this altar and ask God to jerk all that out of you. Ask God to take all that out of you. Because if you don't ask God to jerk all that out of you, that when you get the opportunity, you'll be leaving. You'll be leaving. Let's bow our head. Let's everybody pray. We ought to have 15 or 20 come down and pray anyway. Heavenly Father, Dear God in heaven, I pray, Father, most of all, Lord, that you'd search our hearts and you'd search our minds. Lord, you especially search the hearts of these young adults, these college and career age children, young people, young adults, these teenagers, Lord. Anybody that has a teenager, anybody that has a young one at home, God, let them have some serious conversations. But we want to make sure our children have not already left before they leave. God, I beg you, Lord, that you'd rescue some kids. I beg you, God, you'd rescue some young adults. Lord, I beg you today, you'd rescue some situations. Turn people back to you. Please turn people back to you. Back to family, back to home, back to God, back to church, back to their Savior. Have your will and your way in the invitation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Several are praying. Let's sing.